recording. Hi, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and we are here to talk about the Tate Man Entertainment production, Business Ethics, with the legendary Lorenz Tate. How are you? Well, well, thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> we're uh, me and my brothers are doing some things. We're we're doing a lot of cool things. Uh, we do things within Hollywood structure. Uh, mm -hmm. We do things independently. Uh, my brothers, Laron Lamar, uh, we love to tell stories that you know that pique our interest, and um, we were able to be involved with a very cool project, a uh, project that I'm very excited about, very proud of, um, Business Ethics, a project that we came on um, to executive produce along with our partners, um, Enos Lake and, you know, the writer, uh, Richard Warham and the director, Nick Warham, are, are, are a duo. They are a team. It's a, it's a father-son team that I think is amazing. And so family and family. It's a family and family. <laughs> Yeah, Bonded, you know what I mean. It was really cool, and so you know, working along with with them was really nice. They brought the project to us. It was already a short film mm -hmm. that they were looking to uh, make it a full length feature, and because we have some, you know, uh, involvement in you know doing these kinds of uh, films, we were like, yeah, we'd love to be a part of it. And obviously, there's conversation about me being in the film. And uh, I assumed that uh, we were going to cast someone else, but oh. you know, spending a lot of time with Nick, our director, it was it was best uh, decided that I would be in, in as the lead in the film. And so, so you're, you're comfortable doing playing the the background. I mean, I know we you know most of us know you as an actor, but you're comfortable stepping away from the camera and going on the other side of it. Yeah, you know, it piques my interest. I just love mm -hmm. the process of how movies are distributed or films are made. I spend a lot of time, you know, uh, with directors and mm -hmm. producers. And um, I just love the, the, the creative process of filmmaking and or telling stories. And so, you know, um, these, uh, these guys already pretty much had everything done and we wanted mm -hmm. to come in, and just, you know, be a part of it and, uh, and rock out with them. And so, you know, the story itself was unique to me because I had never done anything quite like it. I'd never been mm -hmm. really part of anything that, you know, dealt with money management and what mm -hmm. happened. And the story of business ethics really is, uh, centers about uh, centers around a guy who uh, is really smart, smartest guy in the room. He's the guy that, um, you know, uh, graduated from the top of his class, if you will, in business school. And he works for a top money management firm that, goes under, you know, some mm -hmm. business was happening and it collapsed. And he himself found himself at rock bottom. He, everything, mm -hmm. the floor just completely fell from underneath him. And so he had to figure a way to get back on top. How could he work his way up this sort of corporate financial ladder? And something that always um, sort of lived in the back of his mind is something that came about when he was in in, in business school was uh, Ponzi schemes. And, right. you know, <laughs> what's the moral compass behind, uh, you know, scheming people out of money? And because he wants to do whatever it is necessary to get him back in the game, he decides to come up with this mastermind idea to scheme very rich and wealth, wealthy people out of their money. And he assigns all these really sharp people around him to pull off this scheme. Now, keep in mind, this guy is not a nickel and dime on the corner, running right. low. It's a much bang. larger scale. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's on a scale of how do I get people who have corporate money and money that is liquid. He's not into credit card frauds. He mm -hmm. wants the real money. So he has this, this fund that he creates and he convinces people to put their money into his fund. And it's millions and millions of dollars. And when it works, he thinks, okay, I didn't think it would work, but- But it did. <laughs> happening. And the moment that he's about to get caught, 
he finds himself getting out of it. And so he right. goes down deep rabbit hole, if you will, of just how I can't lose. And it's almost like, is this meant for me to take these rich people money? And to me, I was like, yo, that's kind of cool to see um, a young brother actually in a different kind of environment. Yeah. You know, to, to see that. So uh, we were excited just to be a part of the, the journey and, and, and being a part of, you know, making something that was really cool. And again, I tip my hat off to director Nick and, and, you know, his partner, dad, Richard for, you know, bringing this project to us. And um, we just had a great time, a great experience. So I wanted to ask you about that because right now, like sort of in these COVID times, and um, there's a lot of people that are sort of talking about, when you're talking about Ponzi scheme on that level, we're talking about like blessing loans, go ahead, and put your $50 in, I'm gonna give you 500. Like that's a lot of stuff going on like that, right? So I'm wondering, does this movie kind of serve as a cautionary tale in the end? Like, you know what? I should not have gave that person $50 last week. <laughs> well, on a certain, on a, yeah, on many different levels. I think he's just dealing with, uh, a different level of money but i mean you gotta you definitely when you are putting your money into uh, a group yeah <laughs> uh, you know you gotta, you gotta you know look at it with some skepticism and so this movie definitely will uh, allow us to kind of see it on various scales but certainly you want to you want to you know and and, and fifty dollars you know a lot of people right now Ain't got fifty dollars to burn, you know, on that. But you know, it, so. it, there's something exciting. I think even even though we're talking about on a corporate scale, there's something just really excited about the idea of multiplying your money, you know, times ten or whatever. So there's a desperation in that, and sometimes it does get the very richest, and sometimes the very poorest. So I understand the draw. You know, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah, and this is the time also because right now a lot of studios in Hollywood aren't distributing their movies right now. They're holding them off to 2021, you know, given the fact that we're dealing with a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So they're let going to the theaters. And we felt, thought like this is a great time to release this film and go straight to the, you know, audiences, right? You know, on demand, get right to it, you know? And so- And, and where, where is it on demand? Where can we see it? It's gonna be on iTunes. It'll be okay. available on iTunes. Um, Google Play, Amazon, so people can okay. do it, you know. It, on all available platforms. All you know? available <laughs> I did want to ask you a question because um, earlier you said that um, something that, that also drew you to the project was that you were working with a family and then you work with your family. So one thing that I noticed about you is that you're always with your brothers. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like you always, it's like, you know, left, right, it's somebody's in the middle, whatever the case may be, it's always you three. And I... I really think that's very valuable and a very interesting thing because in a Hollywood space, you know, we're talking about, you know, the idea of family, but you guys are able to come together with Tateman Entertainment and do something significant as a family. So how is it to have your real family right next to you, you know, right with you working on these um, projects? And how does that help you to have that sort of the groundedness of the fam of your family um, when you when you grow up as an actor and even and as a producer, just totally just in, in Hollywood? <laughs> I, I can say this, my brothers are the ones I tr trust most. The trust okay. mm -hmm. I trust them beyond, you know, any and everybody, you know, mm -hmm. we have gone through it all. And when we have that united front together, you know, it's special because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we have each other, you know, whether, you know, whatever's happening, the highs and lows in Hollywood or the entertainment show business, there's always these highs and lows. And I'd rather go through those highs and lows with them. And right. something parents have always instilled in one another is to stick together. We're stronger as a group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's always something because we're going to be honest with each other. We're not going to pat each other on the back, you know, when we're dealing with our, you know, shortcomings. Right. Uh, but we certainly will encourage each other. Um, you know, we have obviously individual ideas and concepts and approaches, but ultimately we move as a group and it's quite nice to be able to have that support. And, you know, when you can find other, you know, uh, people who are working together as a family or as a team and they've been doing it for a long time, it's something that we recognize and it's really special to us and that's what we're able to find. You're like, they like us, huh? <laughs> yeah. 
like, oh, what is that? <laughs> That's they, wonderful. It, it's you know they they you know with with the family they have you know um, brothers and sisters who all kind of got great ideas. Um, it's really cool. So we we respond to that, and you know we look at you know uh, people like the uh, the Wayans family who have been sticking together. Yeah. Long, um, to be able to see people work together as a family is really nice. Uh, but again, you know, these are people that I trust. And you know, what can I say? You know, mom and dad said always stick together. And it's not one of those things. It's just, you know, we're each along for the ride. Like we both, we all three of us, my brothers, Lamar, around Lamar, we all have our special way that we kind of fit in a scheme of things you know everybody sort of has their specialty and it's it's really um something that's been working for us and we plan on to continue to do it together we have a project that we're going to be we're still working on with um, um lawrence fishburn and his company his team that they've been you know he and his partner helen Sugland been together for 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 years and they've been rocking together we have bronzeville which is an audio series that we did a couple of years ago and we are dropping Bronzeville in reference to Chicago. Yeah. Chicago, Bronzeville. You know, I'm, Bronzeville. I'm, I'm originally from Chicago too. Okay. And so I listen you have to, <laughs> on iTunes, you have to download uh, in the podcast is uh, Bronzeville. And it's basically uh, a story about, uh, you know, the, the, after the great migration of 6 million people ah. coming from establishing um, you know, communities where black folk were self-sufficient. Um, we, we wanted to tell that story where you know, black folks weren't running from, you know, white people. We were actually, you know, thriving in, in like other communities were, were thriving at that time. And so we decided to do a podcast or audio series based on that. And now it is, you know, reached a level where we're going to now do it as a, um, as a, as a, as a TV series. And, and so through Tate Entertainment. Yeah, uh, along, okay. uh, along with our other partners with Lawrence Fishburne, and, uh, his company, Cinema Gypsy. So yeah, so we're we're doing a lot of stuff, you know, collectively with other, you know, production companies and distributors. And so we're, we're, we're steadily rocking and, and, and moving and creating stuff, yeah. I like what you said about the United Front of having your brothers because it it does sort of add a barrier and it it makes people have to just keep it a little more real than they would expect to because it's not like you can sort of butter up. They it's don't. A, always, you know, some people say that they like to see us together. A lot of them they they don't really like it. <laughs> no, they don't like it, but it's okay because they can't stop it because right our, exactly. Our bond is built differently, you know. Yeah. So when you family. It's just what it is. We're just wired differently. There's not much anyone can do about that other you'll than- You'll always you know, have each other. Projects, you know, come, you know, whatever you just decide to take on, but you'll always have each other. That's that's always, very different. People can't say that, you know. No, and it's it's a blessing. And for us, we are pretty confident in, in, in what we're able to bring to the table. Um, it's not always recognized. And sometimes we are feeling ourselves having to continue to prove ourselves over and over and over again, but that doesn't stop us. You know, um, our, our mentality is you can, you know, work with us or watch us work either way. We are getting it done. I think the takeaway too, is just, um, you know, beyond taking on or going for projects, you guys just said, well, we're going to do it ourselves. You know, we're going to make it happen. And we, I think a lot of times, especially now people mm -hmm. really need to take that in and understand that there's a lot that you can do. You don't have to wait, yeah. make it happen. Mm -hmm. Surround, surround yourself with like-minded people, mm -hmm. like-minded storytellers or people who all have the same goal, you know, and the same agenda. Um, and when you are able to find it, a lot of times you have to, you know, it's trial and error. You have to weed people out to see what their real agenda is and see, you know, what, if you all are making the same project for the same reason. And a lot of times people aren't doing it for the same reasons. And for us, it's about telling stories. It's not about, you know, anything other than getting, you know, quality stuff out there because our parents have always said, if you don't like something, then you can do something about it through change. So why don't you tell your own, your, 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 your stories and surround yourself with people who um, see things the way you see them, or you may see it the way they see them and tell stories and find a way to 
inspire, motivate, and um, uplift people through your 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 artistry and your business. I like that you also keep bringing up your parents. It, it just sort of reinforces that. <laughs> I keep going back to the family thing, just that having that that groundedness of having a family and people that love you around you, it does uh, sort of tell, it, it changes the kind of story that you can have. We don't hear Lorenz State acting crazy on, you know, uh, these uh, gossip blogs. And, you know, we don't see you doing nothing like that. <laughs> no, and, and for me, I, listen, I'm human like everybody else. Right. You know, you know uh, that you see or hear about or people, I, you know, I might think and feel the same way, but it's all about, I look at the bigger picture, you know, okay. um, there are going to be hiccups and bumps and there's going to be missteps along the way. But at the end of the day, I just want to do, um, you know, the best and the right thing and, and be the best version of myself as I possibly can. Even if there's, you know, those pitfalls or those things that you have to avoid, you got to do that. And I, and I definitely, like you point out, I, the foundation is our parents because our parents, they came from big families. My mother came from, you know, 12 brothers and sisters. My dad came from eight brothers and sisters. And so, or seven brothers and sisters he had. And so that being said, like family is deeply rooted in, in, in us and, you know, team effort is real. And mm -hmm. so um, it's the thing that I, encourage and instill in my children my wife and i we have four boys and them more boys <laughs> having the you know um the team effort the tribal effort is really important because you're going to meet people you're going to go through things um but those who you started out with and you have those principles who you share with it, you know, that's, that's important. And clearly my brothers and I have our own individual lives. We got to mm -hmm. do our own thing. And it's nice to be able to have a break uh, from each other just because <laughs> it's just nice uh, when we can come back together and share stories and share, share ideas uh, and find a way to do something with, with those life experiences. So, and I was going to ask you this. I mean, we've obviously seen you act uh, throughout the decades. And it's like, you've always been very youthful. <laughs> like you got this thing. I know, you know, the running joke is just like, this man doesn't age. Like, so I'm even thinking about just kind of thinking about the productions, the, the different products that you have. So you could, you could play somebody 20 years younger, probably, or probably pay you. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So tell us, what do you do? Or, or where is it coming from that you could just remain <laughs> eternally youthful? <laughs> Talk about moms and pops, my mother and father, the <laughs> It runs in the bloodline. It's in the genes, you know. Uh, you know, we've been very blessed and, and fortunate. And um, and what can I say? I I, I always look kind of a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of projects, and so and just always coming up. I was like, so I always had much uh, like little 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 facial hair. I was always a and because I had facial, hair, I was able to get by because everybody's always saying you look like a little boy. You look like a little boy. <laughs> I got to keep my little my little my little mustache and. And face your hair going but no honestly I, it's really nice to to see people or hear people say you know what is he doing and you know what how's it and honestly it's it's genetics i i would i would say but also um you know i try to lead a, a pretty decent life you know what i mean i don't yeah the, the fast life i like to have a good time but you know you know, you know trying you're to not like a party that. animal no. <laughs> like hey kids uh see you later <laughs> i've seen <laughs> was lives in a real yeah. way you know i've seen it uh in inside of you know hollywood and you know people close to me outside of hollywood i've seen how that fast life can really destroy you and so i felt like it was important for me just in my just in my life in general to continue to run the marathon right yeah, at marathon man and try to avoid as many pitfalls as you possibly can and so that being said, you know, I have a better sense of, you know, who I am and what I want to do and how I want to, you know, project myself. And I take that pretty seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that with you having spent so much time in Hollywood, I mean, it's, you know, some people, they don't learn lessons quickly. I mean, or some people have to go through things to learn lessons, but I'm sure you can sort of observe and see what, you know, sort of the right or wrong or what can happen. So you have a real sort of a front row view of, of good and bad. <laughs> Because, you know, early in my career, 
you know, I've been doing it for a long time. I've been in the business now uh, professionally for 30, 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. you know, I was 10 years old and I wasn't always the center of, you know, projects. I wasn't the star of these projects or whether it's a TV show or a movie. You know, um, I had done a lot of guest star and co-star and one liners here. And, one and so I saw a lot of how the, the industry treated people who were peripheral versus the people who were the center. So mm -hmm. I got a real sense of and how they acted and reacted towards being the center and how others who were the man or woman. Uh, who was the star? I got a chance to really see how that was, how they, you know, treated people, um, how they, you know, uh, their view on things, uh, or and also my view on it. So it really kind of helped shape for a long time. Like my first movie was Menace to Society, but I had been working professionally as an actor for, you know, you know seven eight years before you know i had before you got like a really big project so what made you keep going though because at that point somebody might say you know why you know i'm not i don't have my mental society yet so you know why should i keep doing this well because i was still very young you okay know, i was a child actor if you will and i wasn't one of those child actors that had success to the point where i was on a tv show for you know, 10 years or five years or seven seasons where you could place the character that, that I played with a name and all that, that was world renowned. So I kind of just was moving along. And I also lived a very, you know, normal life. I mean, acting was just kind of a thing. Something that you just did. My brothers and I got involved with just to kind of keep us out of trouble. You know, we come from Chicago. We, you know, running around chasing girls and, and a lot of energy and we were ready to knuckle up with, with people, you know. So I was like, I, I, I see that you, were, you went to like you're kind of like sort of a Chicago, California guy in a sense. So you but you more identify with Chicago or like how do you where do you think like where do you where do you identify with? Like where are you from? And, and... I'm from the shot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah, definitely have had the hybrid experience because interesting enough. My parents, our parents, even while we were living here, our parents said to us, we want to keep you guys uh, with, you know, grounded and connected with Chicago. So even though we were in school, summer vacations for two, two and a half months at the time, we would spend 100 percent time in Chicago. Interesting. Um, you know, uh, winter breaks, Chicago, spring breaks, Chicago. So we spent a lot of time back home. And when I got you know, of age, you know, I said, I want to move back. I got out of, I got out of school. I was, I'd done Love Jones in Chicago. And I was like, yo, I got to get it. I got a crib out here. I got to chill. So I found myself, you know, moving back to Chicago and spending quite a bit of time, even though I had went through, you know, you know, middle school and, and high school and all that stuff and, and, and grammar, middle school and high school, uh, in, in California. Um, the last part of my, 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 schooling in high school I, I had a tutor for a long time you know um so long story short i felt like this would be a good time i'm doing movies i'm doing a lot of stuff and i was like chicago just is just a vibe and so yeah. even though uh i was back and forth i've always just felt connected to chicago um but i gotta say that the Los Angeles, uh, being in California, the experience of it has really, you know, shaped up my, my life. And for that, I, I'm very humbled to have been able to be in California and being in Los Angeles and working. also working and also calling this home. But the roots truthfully uh, are in Chicago because it was instilled. And then a lot of family from the shy would come and try to you know get their start here in yeah. LA. Well, uh, a you lot don't even of have to do that now. They do they do a lot of productions in Chicago now. Yeah, yeah, but just in general, not even actors, but I'm just talking about people. Mm. My family was just coming in, you know, just trying to get a whole new start. So we had a lot of family members living with us. I always lived with <laughs> beyond my two brothers. We always had cousins and uncles and aunts. We 
we just come from a big family. I mean, even till my adulthood, I would have family living with me that weren't my siblings, you know, just right. because just used to it. And so a mm -hmm. lot of them were from Chicago and that Chicago energy was um, always connected. It was always connected. And we would bring that presence here in California and LA. And uh, what can I say? I mean, there's a lot of people in LA that are not from LA, but yeah. some of the closest friends and the people that I rock with and are dear to me are actually from California, like for real, for real. Like, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's been an interesting thing, but definitely a hybrid, but I represent the shot, you know, for life, you know, uh, all the way, every day, all day. But also, you know, I got to give a lot of love and respect and honor to L.A. and the experience of being here in California, for sure. Absolutely. Do you have a lot of um, friends in Hollywood or do you kind of look at them as more like business relationships? Like we kind of sort of think about like sort of industry relationships. Do you actually have close friends? I'm close. I'm close friends with a, a lot of people, a lot of people um, that I've had. Um, you know, time spent on films or uh, doing doing things uh, on television. I'm still very close to certain people, mm -hmm. and yeah, I've, I've, I've a, I have quite a few friends that uh, we have. I, I say maybe the you know movie was the catalyst of our friendship, uh, or you know people that I've got a chance to know along the way in Hollywood are still very close to this day and we may not talk all the time but when we do it's well that's how you know somebody's you know somebody's really your people you know you don't have to talk every day pick up the phone Listen. once every six months and it's a three-hour conversation i mean e yeah easy yeah. that's me all the time yeah that's wonderful and so listen i wanted to know what you ultimately want people to take away from business ethics getting back to the film we're promoting <laughs> oh wow you know just uh what I want to just take away just the experience of, you know, being careful of, of, of you know, how you do things in business. You know what I mean? Um, I always ask people, have you ever been scammed? What does that feel? What does it feel like to, to, to get scammed? Um, and is it actually wrong to, you know, be the kind of person that my character is in terms of a shark within a world of sharks, if you will. I mean, it's just- Yeah, I, I thought about that because he's doing it to rich people. So it's like, you know, if we have to sort of think about our own moral compass. Like, do I feel as bad? Like, and how did they get there? You know, it's kind of like that whole like no billionaires concept. <laughs> right, but, but you have to also understand that, you know, uh, these very rich people are humans too. You know, people, right. yes. so you, you know, just take away is, is he doing what, what's right? And, what would you do in Zachary Cranston's shoes? Would you right. do that same thing if you had the opportunity to do it? And I, I think people would, you know, they'd be surprised. You know, <laughs> you, you can say one thing, but then in that situation, in that moment, you may act very differently. Listen, mm -hmm. desperate, de desperate times and de desperate measures, you know, people will do um, whatever. This is true, especially now. That's why I said I'm, I'm keeping my inboxes as closed. I ain't putting no $50 for the 500. I don't care what they talking about. I ain't got it. I ain't never gonna have it. And I'm gonna stay broke over here and that's fine. <laughs> but a guy like uh, Zachary Cranston ain't your typical guy. Yeah, he, he got his he mouthpiece. <laughs> we'll see, and you were like, oh, okay. I'll I'll, I can get Zachary a little bit. <laughs> but I... I thank you so much for your time. Um, thanks for talking to us. And of course, for giving us a slice of life in terms of um, your, your family values. Um, you spoke a lot about your brothers and just so fondly about your parents and, and how you grew up. You talked about Chicago, just so many things that just left, I think anybody that watches this interview will feel very, very warm and just feel like, you know, I should call my mama. <laughs> family is important, family first. I, th I think that's perfect, man. I, I really appreciate you and thank you for your time. Again, guys, it is Lorenz Tate who has been acting and been on everything and he still looks 25, but you just saw him 25 years. <laughs> and he can't tell us what he's doing because he's just doing you know, what he does. Um, <laughs> that's those genetics. I, I thank you um, for your time, though. And if you want to, uh, we, we went over the projects that you're working on, but we can go ahead and, and just sort of talk about that again, as far as what's rolling out under Tateman Entertainment and anything new that you're working on that you may not have, um, you might have missed. A, a, a few things, but again, the focal point right now is us talking about business ethics mm -hmm. and uh, 
Um, again, we're just excited about this project. Um, again, shout out to everybody who's a part of uh, Business Ethics. It was uh, a joy and it's been a long time coming. Um, a lot of effort on so many people that, you know, we don't always get a chance to see and know, but um, we appreciate you all. And I hope that the audiences will continue to watch, you know, this movie and check it out and, and spread the word about business ethics. Oh, a hundred percent. And then you see again, family and, you know, you just, you know, this is exciting. Like, I just love to see that, that effort just put forth. Like you guys are like, yo, we're doing this. <laughs> we, we're going to cut everybody. Like we're going to make this happen. <laughs> We just we're just pushing out there the narrative and and you know it's uh it's really important so again i'm just happy to be a part of it and it's a really fun ride it's a really entertaining movie so no what i what i saw was hilarious i i can yeah 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 what i saw was hilarious it's funny it's some it's some cool stuff so do you ever out. watch yourself in the movies or is it like uh yeah i watch it you know i, I watch it a couple of times and i kind of got a like <laughs> from it for a little bit but it's kind of nice to be able to uh experience it all over again so cool. I'll be watching business ethics as people are, are watching it uh, as it releases and drops October 23rd. October 23rd. So now we know. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Lorenz Tate. And I can't wait to see business ethics. Um, We'll have our own watch party. Appreciate it. P Thank appreciate you so it. much. Take care. Thanks. Take care.